and sisters in Christ. Today, we worship in your own sanctuary. You made your own place of house of God at your own place, making your own space. We give thanks for this kind of time of season um, to worship on Sunday. Beginning next Sunday, we will gather at the house of God in this place and then we worship and also next Sunday we're gonna have a communion together so I hope that you can join and if not if you are not able to make you may also able to join in worship in your own place through the online And also, this coming week on Wednesday, we have a care ministry at 1 o'clock on Wednesday. So I hope that if you have any concerns, please contact me or contact the members of the care ministry team so that we can take care of and pray for uh, those who are in need. Good morning. As we start our service today, I'm going to light the Christ candle, and you can do this at home as well. We're bringing the light of Christ into our sanctuary and into the world as well. Would you please join me in a call of worship? The sun rose today opening our hearts anew. By love, Christ came into the earth. Reorient us around love. Our God is love. Refashion us to love's image as we worship today. Would you please join me in the opening prayer? God of love, we are gathered here today as one body because you chose to call us your friends. We come from all walks of life. We have had our share of good days and bad days. Despite all the drama, we made it here to worship and praise your name. May the love we experience today in worship restore us, revive us, refresh us. God, use our broken selves as tools of hope and love on this day. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 9 
through 17, and I'll be reading from the Common English Bible today. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you, and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends, because everything I heard from my Father I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit, so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love one another. May God add his blessing on a reading of his holy word. According to the um, lunar calendar, today is March 26th. And many countries in Asia, they celebrate this day. The reason I point out today is March 26 is my mother's 96 years birthday today. Therefore, yesterday afternoon, which is today's date in Korea, I called her and celebrate by saying happy birthday, mommy. Now she lives with my brother's family and her memory loss is getting worse and worse and worse. Because I noticed that she is confusing the names of my children, but she still remember my name, which is good. She depends on walking sticks and wheelchair on her daily living. But I also figured out that her failing of her strengths. But I give thanks to God that she lives long life we never imagined that. You know, and she and I have almost the same conversation whenever I call her. I usually call weekly on the weekends. And I said, Mom, are you okay? And how is, are you? And then she said, oh. And then she always asked me, is your family up well? And I said, yes, they are all right, mom, don't worry. And then she always say again, I'm happy you are all good. That conversation never ends. She always think of me and my family. I will, like a, joyful and then sad at the same time whenever I am in contact with her. But I also experience that I am loved and cared and be touched because she cares for me. She loves me. And then her way of saying is, I experience what God's love is. The Gospel reading today about what the true love is seems to express that should be recognized on these special days, whether about parents or spouses or fellow Christians or men or women. Last Sunday, my message title was Abide With Me, and today's title is Abide In Love, and both a textual text come from the same chapter, Gospel of John, chapter 15. 
The world abide, as I mentioned last week, is a dominant word in the Gospel of John and is repeated often. 17 of the 18 times the word abide occurring in the New Testament are from the Gospel uh, or epistles of John, such as 1st John, 2nd John, and 3rd John. The word abide means remain in modern language. Or in the other translation, it depicts as live. So, to live with me, Christ, and live in love is another way of expression. In the major commitments of our lives, love can be expressed in two statements. Number one, abide with me, experience that love, which shares the verses from one to eight, and then secondly, abide in love, express that love uh, beginning verses 9 through the end of that verse 17. The first part, abide with me as an experienced love, is explained by the vine grower, vine and branches, which symbolized God the Father, Son Jesus, and us as a human as we symbolize mutual interdependence relationship between God, Christ, and us. The abiding relationship of vine and branches of last Sunday's lesson brings about the bearing of much fruit. Now that the purpose of abiding takes shape in love, maybe this kind of shape or you know this shape there are a different way of expression. Thus, the second part of Abide in Love, as today's message title, I chose is an expression of that love. Love is the fruit of the abiding relationship of Father and the Son, and those who follow His word. Today, reading takes us to the journey of that love which Jesus has for us, and calls us in the community, whatever and wherever it is, to have for each other. Here are some of the relevant verses again. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I kept my Father's commandments, and remain in his love. I can find the dynamics of our relationship with God, Christ, and us. If I understand and apply this passage in depth, this passage will almost nearly turn our priorities upside down. Abiding is our obligation. Fruitfulness is God's concern. The true, path, true vine is the source, author, and the finisher of our faith. Abiding stresses the source of our life and strength. But we sometimes have the cart before the horse. In other words, we have a tendency to preoccupied with our performance rather than abiding with the person of Christ. We have tendency to be more interested in the results we achieve than in simply resting in Christ, abiding in love. Let me go further of my understanding into details. First, abide in love is the gift. The verses, the sentence in the Bible says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Again and again, we are asked to live in the love of Christ. Love of Christ. We call that the Greek word for love is 
agape translated as charitable love. The agape is love for people who cannot pay back. This agape love is like grace, a free gift for others. It is a gift of undeserved or unearned or unmerited. It is a free gift for those in need. In that sense, this agape love is different from other forms of love. We all know and experience that there are all forms of love. Agape love included erotic love, which we experience in our, as a human being, and fillers, in other words, the love for friends and uh, friends, which most of us have, and the uh, soul gate love, which is the love for family. So these other forms of love besides agape love have been experienced, experienced by us most of the days and nights. Those agape love therefore implies the different quality from erotic love, fillers, brotherly or sisterly love for friends and family love which we describe as story love. Second, abide in love is the life, is the life. If you keep my commandments and you will abide in my love, just as I have kept, kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Here in this scripture verses, Pay attention to the word keep, K-E-E-P. Again, Jesus asks us to keep his commandments. This is the fifth time in this section that Jesus has asked us to keep his word. When you keep the commandments of Jesus, you remain in his love. If you keep in his love, then you remain and live in Jesus, in his love. Where money goes, your heart goes. That one, we all experience that. Likewise, abiding Lord is the constant flow of minds, thoughts, behaviors, and life patterns. It is like air we breathe all the time. So, keep my commandment, then you will abide in my love. Therefore, life is the life. Uh, love is the life. And third, abide in love lead us into joy. The scripture verse says, so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. So, Joy of God will be in us and it will, our joy will be complete. So this is a kind of outcome of our abiding in love situation. Now let's highlight the word joy. Jesus wants his joy to be in us so that our joy may be complete and full. Living in Christ and Christ living in us make us filled with joy. Here is an enormous difference between Christ's joy and the worldly joy. I'm sure you experienced that. I experienced that particularly in the early morning. It is like never-ending world spring. The reason I'm saying it is early morning is whenever I wake up in the morning, that time I said, wow, this is another beautiful day. When I wake up in this kind of situation in the morning and realize that I am alive, the inner feeling is joy itself. So smile is naturally appears in my face and I feel refreshed. 
Have you experienced such joy and thanksgiving streaming gently from inside of your being? I'm sure you do. And another good wisdom is that as I get older and I have more time to reflect myself and the relationship with God and with the neighbors, with family members, I notice that it's a kind of encounter with God and the love of God always. That's why I think this is a blessing for me. And the time alone or time together, particularly in the solitude life, as I go out and see the moons, fading moons, and the rising suns, or sometimes fading sunset. It is a moment of happiness. At the moment I am encountering with my source of life, the truth is, I didn't do anything but it is automatic. How happy I am. Force abiding love leads us into the purpose of life. And the scripture verse says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Here, let's highlight the word commandment. In this commandment, there are those eight words. Love one another as I have loved you. This is the commandment of Jesus. It is to love as he loved while he was on earth. These eight words summarize the entire Old and New Testaments. These words summarize all 1,189 chapters in the Bible. These words summarize the purpose of our lives. To love one another, as Christ has loved us. I think there is a beauty of this. I think that once we experience this one, we cannot deny and wants to dwell in Christ of our Lord. Fifth, abiding love fulfills. God is love. God is love. We all know that, but yet it is our formation of our faith, of our life, of our being itself. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. The greatest expression of examples of this kind of love where people lay down their lives for each other. We think of service people in the departments of fire or police, and mothers and fathers, friends, and many other people who sacrifice their lives so that we may live a richer and fuller life. We also think of those who soldiers laying down their lives so that others can live in war situation, which all of us hope for not happening even in our dreams but have been occurring all the time here and there on earth throughout the human history. Let me go into the final thoughts. The shape of God's love in us is forever changing throughout all of our lives. The shape of God's love in us never stays the same. Throughout the stage of life of love, we have been constantly experienced God's love, constantly changing in us. From the moment we are born naked, until the moment we die with nothing but one, pair, one clothes, and every second and every minute and every hour and every day, and every month and every year and every decade, we dwell in love. But unfortunately, right away we do not recognize it. 
We do not appreciate it. We do not take this free gift, which is grace upon grace. But once you experience that moment by moment, we all shout with joy, life is beautiful. Life is beautiful. And then we can say to God, God, it's okay for you to take me away now because you gave us full life. The other secret of this mystery of abiding in love is multipleness. It's like a multiple, multiple, multiple. The more we love, the more we are able to love. Isn't that wonderful? The more we surrender to others, the more we want to surrender. The more we give, the more we get inner joy and peace and happiness. That's why we may call it the greatest love among love. It is the greatest because it grows like a small seed grows in as a become a tree. It grows within us and it grows between us. Love begets love. This is what living the resurrection is all about. Today is the sixth of the East uh, the season. This is what it comes down to love. The bottom line is not what we believe as if Christianity is about creeds. It is not even whether or not we believe in love. It is about actually loving. Whenever we do for others, we lay down something of ourselves. Whatever we visit the sick and pray, we lay down something of ourselves. Whatever, whenever we refuse to discriminate or prejudice against others, but stand up to those who do, we lay down something for of ourselves. When we befriend those whom others shun, we lay down something of ourselves. When we share our own short supply of food with those who are hungry, we, we lay down something of ourselves. We lay down our lives. Although it's not that easy, but at least we try to do. We love and do what you will. Saint Augustine of Hippo in the fourth century punched the ball on the line. In capital, we love. In capital, we, we love. God is love, we are the love. But this is not always easy, as I mentioned earlier. Love is not always a warm, fuzzy feeling. Whether love is a decision we make every day when we get out of bed. The decision needs to be renewed every day because feelings come and go. St. Augustine's advice to love and then do what we want is not permission for license type. What we means is that when we decide to love, our intentions we will always be for the welfare of the other, not for ourselves. We do this freely, freely, not as slaves do when are asked. Jesus calls us, therefore, that we are Jesus' friend. We are no longer servant nor slave. The paradox is that while we are not selfishly looking out for ourselves, we become enriched. We are not economically or financially money-wise, we are not rich, but we are rich people. In my former church, that congregation is a multi-ethnic congregation in a kind of the, not the real slum, but very multi 
Spanish, African Americans, um, of course, uh, may, mainly is a white congregation. But we have some members who have been served in prison in, in his youth life. And we have people who don't have a job. Once you are in that kind of previous record, I noticed that it's hard to get a job. It's, 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 it's not easy. But so the, our offerings are not big enough. And, but the beauty of that community is the people in the community, we are serving the people. We have two times of the food uh, meal service. And every the week, we have a food pantry. Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter dinner time. Then all the community people come and they cook. They bring their own foods. And then they cook in the ch kitchen, church kitchen. And then we serve 300 people. And I always say to our congregation, you are the millionaires. And then one time, the, the couple of people came, we are the millionaires. So I said, you know, when you go to Africa, you see, you are the millionaires. At least in this country, in the United States, you have food on the table because how many food pantries available? There are the free meals available. This country, you cannot say that I'm not a millionaire. You are the millionaires because you are loved. That is not other places you can get. The power of God's great love in Jesus, confirmed in Easter's promise of the resurrection, always has its frame of reference and its power in Jesus' giving of his life on the cross. So we look upon the cross and say, Thank you, Lord. You are my Savior. Amen. Thank you. You are our God. And there is no other God. Only you are our God. And there is none like you. You love us with unlimited love. And we give you our offerings as an expression of our love for you. We pray our gifts would be used to extend your kingdom in our land. May you, the God of all grace, who has called us friends, make us abide in your love always. To you be glory and honor forever and ever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
I invite you to be a quiet time for our call to prayer. care for us never fails. As we reflect on the beauty and the new light in this desert land, we remind of who you are and who we are now. Therefore, we give thanks to you. As we celebrate today as Mother's Day, we remember our mothers. On this earth, we are all sons and daughters of mothers who gave birth so that we might behold each other as brothers and sisters. Yet, how often we are unfaithful. Forgive us, Lord, for being so busy that we miss the many ways you reveal yourself to us. And forgive us for being so consumed and mindful of our own lives that we miss the many needs of those around us. We turn our hearts and minds now to those many needs, to the things in your world that are not as they ought to be. I pray that we may abide in you and you in us. We go, we go carry out, out your love for your, your creation. creation. Pandemic is still ongoing and the world is uncertain in the future and millions of people live in dark and cold. We concern for all the sick. We ask you to recover them to full health and restore them to those who love them. For all those isolated in the homes, sustain them in joy and peace. I pray that we may abide in you and you in us. We go uh, carrying, carrying out, out your, your love, love for, for your, your creation. creation. For all those who have died and those who grieve their loss in isolation, comfort them in their sorrow. I pray that we may abide in you and you in us. We go carrying out your love for your creation. For our church family members on the list or unrecognized who are in sickness, pain and grief, touch them with your source of healing. I pray that we may abide in you and you in us. We go, we go carrying, carrying out, out your love for your, your creation. creation. For the families and the many children living in refugee situations around the world, deliver them from their uncertain future and desperate for safety. I pray that we may abide in you and you in us. We go, we go carrying, carrying out, out your, your love, love for your, your creation. creation. For decision makers at all levels, send them your wisdom and good counsel to serve their communities. I pray that we may abide in you and you in us. We go, we go carrying, carrying out, out your, your love, love for your, your creation. creation. May we create beauty. May we bring justice. 
May we work for the common good. May we cultivate your shalom in this city as it is in heaven. We all offer the prayer you taught us as to your disciples, friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Peace be with you all. Amen.